Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Let's Go Brandon Green. All right, today, so um, we've got Marie here from uh, Singapore, and she uh, was once from Singapore and now lives in uh, Utah. That's correct. Yes, that is correct. So, how long have you been a Mormon for? Since I was eight years old. Well, that was a guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what is it? What's the what's the statistic of Mormon over there? Like fifty percent of the town's Mormon or in Utah or in Singapore? Utah. Singapore probably one percent or something. Oh, not even one percent. They're, they're like oh, three thousand really? members in a city of almost six million, so Oh, so it's a good amount. Yeah. I to be honest, I don't know what the data is in Utah. We just moved here. From the Seattle area, so I'm not oh, sure. So, and uh, your parents were Mormons in Singapore. Yes. Yeah. They joined when okay. they were teenagers. Mm-hmm. Oh, when they were teenagers. Yeah. All right, and then you kept. So, what made you move to Utah then? It's a really long story. So I went to university here in the U.S. And after I graduated, I decided to stay. And I moved to the Seattle area for work. And that's where I met my husband. And he is in the military, so I am a military wife. And we just moved to Utah. So. Yeah, right. Fair Mm -hmm. enough. So you went back there. Um, Okay. And you're... Uh, wanting to talk to us today about very fascinating. Um, yeah, we've all met narcissists, uh, and uh, in in our life, uh, we all come across them once every now and then. But uh, yeah, Marie actually uh, helps people who have um, how to how to how do you put it? Being abused by narc- narc- narcissistic people. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I am a recovery coach. I myself am a daughter of a narcissistic parent. And before we begin, though, I wanted to just define what narcissism is real quick for your listeners. So usually people associate narcissism with narcissistic personality disorder. And you need a psychiatrist or a psychologist to diagnose someone with NPD. And these are usually people who demonstrate arrogant behaviors, they envy others, they lack empathy, they have an extreme sense of entitlement, a need for excessive admiration, they believe that they are exceptionally special and should only associate with special people or high-ranking or famous or wealthy people, and they're usually preoccupied with fantasies and they are kind of in their own reality. They don't they struggle in their own with bubble, being, yeah. Exactly. They they struggle with being present because they have a yeah. grandiose sense of self importance. And so oh. it narcissism is on a spectrum. The traits that I just listed, you have to have about fifty percent of those to be diagnosed with NPD. So there are some people who do have those narcissistic traits, and then the other side of the spectrum would be full blown narcissistic personality disorder. And in my There's some people that are evil with it, aren't they? There's some people that are just oblivious to that's who they are. They're just crap people. And then there's other exactly. people who like enjoy being one and like mm-hmm. I'm and better than everyone. Like they revel in their their narcissistic personality that they were given to them. But and that's another thing. Do you know if it's a learnt behaviour um, that that gets brought up into them, mm-hmm. or is it just like your genes, like you're just born that and you can never change it? That's a great question. Narcissists aren't born. They are created. And usually they themselves were either abused or they experienced trauma that resulted in them having this grandiose sense of self-importance that they disregard other people's feelings. They're dismissive. I can give an example, a classic narcissistic 
move in a relationship, let's say, with a narcissistic spouse. You are going to have dinner with your narcissistic spouse and you cook it and you wait for them and they come home at midnight and they will say, I, I didn't know. Even though you had already put it on the calendar and it was very clearly communicated. And even though you're hurt, your narcissistic spouse will maybe make love to you or be really kind to you or buy you a gift and you'll forget that they hurt you. And that's what narcissists are really good at is using and abusing people to get what they want. And because they lack empathy, they don't have the self-awareness to see how their actions truly hurt people. Yeah, right. So just on that, though, before you see where you said that they were, like, abused and then they turn likely to turn into one, or that can be a contributing factor. I've also heard about it going the other way where, you know, you can tell the little three, four, five-year-old, oh, you're very clever, you're very clever, you're a good boy, you're a good boy. Then they just take that with them forever. I'm a clever, good boy, you know. Mm-hmm. And then next minute they're a 30-year-old clever good boy that can do no wrong even when they do wrong. So that have you heard much of that? Or Yes, that's a, a great point you bring up because with the example you just shared, constantly if you praising, a kid. yes, overpraising, even if they do make a mistake, that's when narcissism can be created because... People praise kids if they make mistakes. Exactly, and that's not realistic. That's not how real life works. If your child says 2 plus 2 is 5 and you say, great job, instead of telling them, oh, that's wrong, let's figure out what 2 plus 2 actually is. Well, that's crazy if people are saying that, but that's why the world's crazy, so I'd probably believe... Yeah, it makes sense, you know. Yes, when you... When you are afraid to be realistic with a child, that can lead to narcissism and ultimately narcissistic personality disorder. Yes. Okay. Well, fair enough. Well, um, all right. So on the talk, talking about who talk, who you, who you're dealing with. So you're dealing with people that are are broken from these people and, and they, and they reach out and they say, I want to feel like a human again, like I've, he's, the person sh- shattered me and I don't know where to start again. Is that how it goes? Or- yes. So one of the type of clients that I work with are spouses of narcissistic partners. So they go on behind their back to talk to you or their ex-partners? or Yes, ex-partners and also they're trying to make things work with their current spouse and usually with whether it's with an ex. Yeah, I'm getting help at the moment um, because of you. (laughs) Or they they don't know, the the mm -hmm. narcissist doesn't know. So usually, so because I'm not a mental health professional, I'm not a therapist, so I only work with people who are currently in therapy or they've already been through therapy and they are familiar with narcissism and I help them with creating concrete goals and processes to help them let go of their self-limiting beliefs and to be able to have healthy, solid boundaries with their narcissist. So for example, with co-parenting with an ex-husband or an ex-wife who is narcissistic, they will lie to the children, they will try to get the children to turn their back against the healthy and stable parent. And so my job as a coach is to give support to my client to help them create boundaries and help them to not be provoked by the manipulative tactics of the narcissist. Yeah, right. And um, so how did you even get into this? Like, yeah. One day you you said your father's a narcissist. Next minute you you're teaching other people how to deal with it. Yeah. So actually, my mother is the one who is oh, narcissistic. Your yes. 
And I have known since I was about 22 years old. I am 28 now. And for the past six years, I have been in therapy. But the thing with therapy is that, with talk therapy at least, you keep talking about it. And I realized the more I talked about it, it wasn't helping me progress and it wasn't helping me to grow. And I would just repeat the cycle of letting my mother use and abuse me. And it was affecting my dating life, my professional life. I was her ATM. I learned about financial abuse and therapy. And it wasn't until I joined an online support group for daughters of narcissistic mothers that I started to learn about coaching. And I was mentored and coached myself. And I do love helping people. And so that's kind of what got me into coaching. Okay, right. And uh, your relationship with your mum today, like, is it good? I am no contact with her. Okay. And you said at 22 you realised, was that because you'd had no idea that she was one before or? uh, Oh, I, I was not familiar with narcissism. And the thing is, too, In Chinese culture, being loyal and respectful to your elders, no matter what, even if they're cruel to you, mm -hmm, was what that that was what I was used to. And so, when my mother would borrow thousands of dollars from me, and I was a broke university student myself, I thought it was normal. Oh, I have to help my mother. Yeah, and she would, and she would used the money in inappropriate ways and she was in debt and she wasn't good with money. And I have many examples, but the point is I, I actually went to therapy for the first time because my friend su- suggested it to me and I told my mother and I shouldn't have. And she was very, very angry with me. And she said, what would people think? And Brandon, (laughs) I was suicidal. I wanted to kill myself. And she said, what would people think if they know you killed yourself? What would people think if they know you have depression and you go to therapy? Because part of narcissism is that their image is extremely important to them people's perception of them and so she was more afraid that she would look bad than the health and safety of her daughter daughter, yeah and so i didn't go for another year so that that was when i was 21 the next year i went and i had a friend who's actually from australia he's from sydney and he was like marie just go don't tell your mother just go and so I went and I, it was like the first adult thing I did because up to that point in my life, I had to run every decision by her. Even uh-huh. though I lived across the water, Singapore is so far from the U.S., but she oh, controlled she every part control. of my life. Yes. Yeah. They love control. Okay. And so yeah. it, it was my therapist when I would share how stressed I was about everything in my life and she wanted to go back to my family of origin and how I was raised. And I was like, why does how I was raised affect my life right now? And I I didn't understand that from zero to 12 years old, the way our parents talk to us becomes the voice in our head as adults. Okay. And that's why I was beating myself up because my mother would would be beating me up verbally and emotionally Mm -hmm. abused me and Um, I was like her emotional support animal as a child which some people call that emotional incest where there isn't a healthy dynamic between a parent and child and you're an only child no I have a younger brother and does he was he a punching bag like this as well no so um let me explain the family dynamic um with a narcissistic parent so 
when there's a narcissistic spouse, uh, usually the other spouse is the enabling parent. And so they defend the narcissist and they protect the narcissist. So, for example, when my so that he, so he's saying like, "What are you talking about? I was there the whole time. This didn't happen like this." Yeah. So in the case of my father, he was an enabling parent. So when my mother would criticize me for making small mistakes, and I would be crying. And I would go to him. He would defend her and say she's under a lot of stress at work. Your mother loves you. She won't do that again. And but it would just repeat. And they would. That's so. There's a narcissistic parent, the enabling parent, and there are usually three types of children. There's the scapegoat or black sheep child, and usually they're the ones who recognize that there's something off in the family. And when they point things out to people, they aren't usually believed because the narcissistic parent is able to con and convince the people around them that the scapegoat is lying, even when they're not. And then the other kind of child in this family dynamic is the golden child, and usually the golden child is an extension of the narcissistic parent. They have so, all the like good the traits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so my younger brother is the golden child, and then the third child is the invisible child, and usually they're the most neglected and they're ignored because they <laughs> don't engage with the parent like the scapegoat does. Because usually the yeah. scapegoat child clashes with the parent, the narcissistic parent, the most, while the golden child gets praised by Christ. the narcissistic parent, and then the invisible child is neglected and ignored. Yeah, wow. So you obviously wouldn't talk to him then? No, actually, it's we've put in a lot of hard work, but we're in a really good place right now. And yeah. what mostly helps and what about us. Your father? I talk to him on occasion, but yeah. I do have really solid boundaries with him. And whenever I do talk to him, I assume that he will tell my mother. So I basically tell him nothing. <laughs> oh, so do you think there'll ever be a time when you and your mum will reconnect? or Maybe in the next life. I feel like God can be the only mediator because she yeah. does not want to go to therapy. Yeah, she must be mortified that you have accused her of this or maybe just more embarrassed. I think both, to be honest. Like I said, yeah. when I was 21 and I wanted to go to therapy, she was mortified. And that's narcissism in a nutshell. They are very uncomfortable with honesty, with truth. They don't want to take responsibility. Yeah. And oh. you, you started our conversation asking me about whether I was Mormon. And to be honest with you, I didn't want to be a part of the church growing up because the church is very family oriented. Yeah, yeah we, I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, there, we, we have church, church families are very tight knit, you know. Exactly. There's nothing outside of them. There's not much interaction going outside. So a church family is times a hundred internally. This is what I've just observed. Mm -hmm. But a church family is a very and usually they're happy families, to be honest. Um, and, <laughs> usually. Uh, and, it, and so on the outside. Not, mm -hmm. yeah. So on the outside, if you met my family, you would think that we are loving and kind. Yeah. But that was the facade that my mother had created for the public. Yeah. Over the and pulpit, think... she would share all these things, and people thought that she was a great saint and a very Christ-like woman, but in private, she, she was a different person. That's what I was about to say. Do you think she's more putting it on for the perception of a character or she really is into God? I think it might be a little bit of both. Okay. She she tries in her own way. Exaggerates. But yeah. at the end of the day, I feel like it isn't genuine, but... I, I'm not God. I can't judge whether yeah. it is genuine or not, but from my personal experience, it's not genuine.
Like she and your bro and your brother's mm -hmm. in the church. He is, yes. She's still in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and your dad's still in there and everything. Yes. So it's still a pretty churchy family, except you've just run to America and uh, hide. Just kidding. Yeah. No, I'm thriving. Yeah. I, I did want to tell you though, Brandon, that something that has helped me because I. I have learned about narcissism and it opened my eyes that I would, there was nothing wrong with me as a child that I just didn't have an emotionally stable primary caregiver to teach me how to regulate my emotions. Because that's one of the things about having a narcissistic parent is that they're emotionally very volatile. They are all over the place. They can go from zero to a hundred very quickly. They're hot and cold. And they set the mood for the house. And so yeah. I didn't want to be a part of the church. I wasn't expecting the conversation to go this way, by the way. I wasn't expecting to talk about the, about the LDS church, but I had to kind of leave the church for a little bit because I didn't want to be a part of the church where they celebrate it and admire it people like my mother who was secretly abusive and so i've had to well, like, separate um that and but that's you still why fighting God. yes so i've been able to separate my mother from the church that she doesn't represent the church and that's why i'm still a part of it because i was able to gain my own relationship with God and that I chose to be in the church because I want to. I want, you want to. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that all makes sense. So, um, and how, how can, uh, people talk to you or get in contact with you now? How, how do they get in contact with you now? Yes. You can connect with me on Instagram at Marie Ellis cook. And you can DM me the phrase, let's go Brandon Green, and you'll get a special discount for my coaching services. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. And uh, what, uh, just before we go, are there any um, people that you believe uh, that, that you can help or that you're working with at the moment? What do you mean by that? Like a listener that you have or? Yeah, like uh, like what what? So if it's not just someone who's being, um, is it strictly only you deal with people that have been abused by these narcissistic people? That's a good question. No, I work with anyone who wants to find light and love in their lives, who feel like they're holding themselves back, or if they want to learn how to have healthy boundaries, not just with narcissists, but any kind of toxic people, whether yeah, it's a toxic. family member or a colleague or coworker at work. We all need help and we all desire to feel loved and feel connected. And I would be happy to work with you and help you. All right, great. All right. Well, um, you enjoy your your what is it? Your night over there? Yes, it is at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And um, yeah, let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon Green. Thanks so much, Brandon. <laughs> Thanks. No worries. Okay. Bye. Bye.